Thank you for purchasing your new Glion Snap & Go Model 335. Welcome to our operational video. Let's get started. Now we will remove the bungee which secures the seat to the scooter. And we will remove the armrests and the seat. And now we are ready to unfold the scooter. You will hold the handlebar. This is only to make sure that it doesn't fall when you press the foot pedal. Press down the foot pedal, releasing it. It allows it to, the handlebars to move up and snaps into place. Being careful not to put too much tension or the foot pedal will not disengage. So be careful not to do that. Now let me show you how to lower it. You push down on the foot pedal, making sure to hold the handlebars so you don't lose them and it falls down and hits yourself accidentally. Lower it down, clicks into place, and it's ready to go. Let me show you that one more time. Foot pedal depressed, clicks into place, making sure that it has locked in place and is sturdy and ready to go. Now we will install the seat post. Remove it from its travel location now we're going to make sure that the pegs on the side fit nicely into these locations. Slides in. This keeps it from rotating. If you're not sure if it's in, if it can twist, it's not in the right place. So twist, locks in place. And now we're ready to install the seat. Now we are going to install the armrests onto the seat making sure that the armrest knob is loosened. Slide the armrest in, tightening the knob, making sure to go as, about as snug as you can to hold it tight. Then we'll flip it over. Install the other armrest, tightening the knob. Now these armrests are completely adjustable on width to whatever your specifications and comfort level are, but making sure to keep them secure and tight so that you don't have them fall out. Now we are going to install the seat. Lift up the seat and put the peg on the bottom of the seat onto the seat peg. Now when you sit it in there, it won't quite be locked into place, so you'll need to grab the swivel lever and pull it forward and rotate it and press down until it locks in place. The arms all do completely adjust and you can sit down and pull the lever and rotate. Now I'm going to show you how to adjust the height of the armrests. First you want to raise the armrest up and underneath is a bolt right here and you'll want to loosen it which is righty tighty lefty loosey. So left turn loosens it, raises it up. So the armrest is higher, tightening it down, going to the right, lowers it to your comfort level. Now I'm going to show you the operational controls on our dashboard. First, on your right is a gray button that you'll depress with a small push. That turns your Glion on. You'll see your battery indicators, green, yellow, and red, green being full battery, yellow, medium, red, running out of power. If you do a quick depress on it, your headlight will turn off. Quick to press, headlight turns on. A press and hold will turn your Glion off. Underneath your power button is your throttle. On the left side, we have our switch, which has an F and an R. F for forward is up, R for reverse is down. Underneath that, you have a one, two, three switch, one being the slowest speed setting, three being the fastest. 3 also has the most torque, so if you are in the 1 setting going a little slower and you're going uphill and you're struggling a little, you'll want to move to the 3 or the 2 to give yourself a little more torque going up, up hills. Right underneath that we have a little black button with our horn. And also we have our handbrake on the left. Now I'm going to show you the function of the handbrake. You will pull it with your left hand and put the switch down with your right. That locks it in place. Now once the parking brake is engaged, as such, you cannot move forward. If it moves in any way, your parking brake needs to be adjusted. To release the brake, squeeze with the left hand, the switch pops out, and you're ready to go. Now I'm going to show you the operation of your Glion Snap & Go Model 335. We are going to turn it on. 
showing full battery, and now we are going to depress our thumb control accelerator. If you depress your thumb accelerator and it does not move, make sure that your parking brake is disengaged. Once it is disengaged, you can move forward. The parking brake has two functions. One, it locks your wheels. Two, it turns off the motor. So if it is not disengaged, you cannot move. So now it is disengaged. Set on forward on one, and we can go forward. And reverse. And changing speed settings, you just move it to whatever setting you want, one, two, or three, and depress the thumb accelerator. And reversing. And remember, when reversing, always be aware of your surroundings behind you. Now we're going to fold up your Glion Snap and Go Model 335. First thing we're going to do is remove the seat, and we're going to lift it up and remove the seat post. And what you may have to do is the adjustable handle move forward and it slides right off. We will slide it into its carrying position. Then we will remove our armrests. Now, personally, I do tighten these nuts back up when traveling to make sure they don't accidentally vibrate out as you're moving around. Now we are going to lower the handlebars. We will hold the handlebars so they don't fall down, depress the foot pedal, lowering it until it snaps in place. Then we're going to take our seat and fold it over the handlebar taking our armrests, placing them here and here. Then we take our travel bungee, lock it in place, pull it around the arms and the wheel, bring it down to lock in place. Once it's latched, you can stand it up and you're ready to go. This model does have a self-standing option where once you get it upright, it stands on its own. If not, you're ready to go. Now we are going to charge our battery for our Glion Snap and Go Model 335. On the end of the battery, there is a handy carrying handle. Hold it down. And now I'm going to show you a few things about this battery. First, there is a power switch. The line depressed means you have power on. Circle depressed is power off. If the battery is installed and you do not have power to your scooter, make sure that the line is pressed down. Right next to the toggle switch is a rubber flap. That is the charging port. On the end of your battery, there is an indicator light setting that shows you the amount of power in your battery. Four lights means fully charged. One light or less means battery is dead. Making sure that the battery is turned on when you check your battery power. Now I'm going to show you how to charge your battery. You will take your included charging port, which goes into the wall jack. Then you take your charger, plug it in. The blue indicator light will turn on. Blue means that you do have power to the charger. Then we're going to raise our rubber cover, plug it in. When it turns red, you are charging. When it turns green, you are fully charged and ready to go. Now I'm going to show you how to remove your battery from your Glion Snap and Go Model 335. The Glion comes with two keys. These keys are to remove the battery off of the frame. Right underneath the battery is a key slot. Turn it all the way around till it stops. Battery slides off and comes with you. And to reinstall, slide it all the way till it stops keys around, pulls out, making sure that it is secure in place. Once it's in place, make sure that the line is depressed on the toggle switch for power to make sure it's on. If it is in the circle position, it will not run. Now, if you want to, you can charge your battery on the frame or off of the frame. To charge, you just raise the rubber safety hold, plug it in, make sure you have red on the indicator and you're ready to go. Now I'm going to show you how to install your canvas bag that comes standard with your Glion Snap and Go. 
you will take your, the little hooks and go under the brake cable onto the handlebars. It sits very nicely on there. Then you'll take your Velcro straps around the handlebar shaft, locking in place, ready to go. And you can use this for your charger, a spare battery, or your lunch. Now I'm going to show you the two travel seat options that are sold separately. The deluxe seat, which I, which I have been showing you, comes standard, but we do have two options. One, a standard bicycle seat, and the second one is a bicycle seat with a back. Now I'm going to show you the installation of these travel seats. You will take your seat post, just like you do with the deluxe seat, placing it in place, making sure the pegs sit in the notches. Then you will take your seat and put it in. I always put it in at a slight angle so that when you twist it, you can feel it lock in place, making sure that it's stable. Then you will twist the locking knob, holding it in place, and you're ready to go. Taking it out, you just pull it out, and you can slide it into the handy travel location that is standard on all Glion Snap and Go models. And you will take your seat post out, put it in place, and you fold it up just like always, and you're ready to go. Now I'm going to show you the shopping cart features for the Glion Snap and Go 335. We will go through the assembly, installation, and function of the shopping carts. Now we're going to assemble the shopping cart for your Glion scooter. First, we're going to remove our seat post. Now, on the seat post, you notice two pegs. This peg holds in the Glion scooter to keep the seat from rotating. This smaller peg is what we're going to be using for our basket assembly. We're going to take our basket assembly hook. You see there's a little notch right here. That notch sits right above that peg. And then we're going to line up our other one on the back side, on the opposite side, so that our bolt holes line up. Our bolts are 5 millimeter Allen wrench bolts, and our nuts are 10 millimeter end wrench bolts. Now we are going to take and put the bolt in the center hole first. This is just to hold it in place to keep it from falling down. And tighten them just a little bit, just so they're finger tight. These are lock nuts, so once they get tight and get onto the threads, they will hold in place. Now we will take our end wrench and our Allen wrench, and starting at the front, tighten just a little bit at a time, each of the bolts and nuts. You will notice a small gap in the middle. Make sure that that gap is even at the front, the middle, and the back so that the baskets hang neatly. Also be careful not to over tighten the bolts and the nuts because that will potentially bend the bracket and the baskets will not sit evenly. Now we're going to add our brackets to the side baskets. You will notice on your baskets, on one side, there are two added supports. These are going to be the sides that go to the inside of your scooter. First, we will take one of our brackets and one of our backing plates. The backing plate goes on the inside, so I'm just going to set it here to show you a few things. The bracket goes between this brace right here so that there are four bolt holes one goes above it one goes below it and on the other side one goes above it and one goes below it this bracket does have threaded holes so there are no nuts that we will be attaching to this our bolts are four millimeter allen wrench bolts so i'm going to hold it right in place and put in the top bolt, and I will take another one and put that on the top. I recommend doing the top first because once you do, you can slide it down and it sits right above this bracket there. We will take our other two and put those in place. You may have to squeeze it just lightly or loosen your top nut or bolt if it does not quite fit. Then you will take an Allen wrench and tighten it down. Don't over tighten it because you can bend the metal.
and you will do the exact same installation on your other basket and now we'll show it on your scooter. Now we're going to install our seat post with the bracket. We are going to lower it onto our glide on snap and go, making sure the bracket with two holes is always towards the front. Once you have it in its peg and notch location, you want to make sure you tighten it down so that this will not get in the way of your baskets. Now we will take our basket and slide it on, making sure it goes just past those rubber stops. Slide it into place. Now, there's a slight adjustment you may need to do at this time when you'll see that this lower bracket is at the center of the main frame. Sometimes it could be too low or too high. This is the time where you'll just loosen your bolts and just raise or lower it so that it sits approximately center on the frame. Now we'll take our other basket and slide it into place, making sure it does avoid both of these spots. And now we'll go to adding our seat. making sure the peg sits on the seat post. Now this is a very interesting spot. If you have the armrest on, there is a knob right here that you may get caught on the baskets. So if you are removing your baskets, be careful not to get caught on that knob. If you do not have the side arms, then that's not going to be a problem for you. And now we're going to install our front basket. You'll place the basket arms underneath of the brake line, making sure not to clamp the brake line. It sits right on the top bar and then it sits right here really nicely and you're ready to go. Now I'm going to show you the function of the shopping cart for your Glion Snap and Go. We recommend getting into it with the seats to the side as you can use the armrest to assist yourself. Do not use the pads to try and get into it as there is a chance you might tip it over. When loading your shopping cart, make sure you try and keep a good center of balance and don't lean too far one way or the other as you could potentially tip it over. It is that easy. Have a nice day. Thank you for purchasing your Glion Snap and Go Model 335. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, please contact us by email or phone.